Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. Uh, today we will be talking about the new licensing window that the Spanish authorities have uh, just uh, launched and uh, that will allow uh, new entrants as well as existing operators uh, applying for licenses for the exploitation of online gambling activities in Spain for one year. Uh, so uh, it's uh, an opportunity that we have thought that it would make sense uh, analyzing for you. For the webinar today, uh, well, uh, we're going to count with three speakers. I'm Albert de Gustinoy. I'm the partner in charge of the gambling practice here at Cuatro Casas. And I will be joined by Elisa Lorenzo and Claudia Ross. They are both uh, associates at uh, the department uh, and therefore are also perfectly uh, well uh, prepared to, to, to give the, the, the webinar. We want the session to be as useful as possible for you. So, so please do not hesitate to, to, to uh, send any question you may have uh, regarding uh, this, uh, this session, as well as any other uh, related uh, issue you may have connected with the licensing window that uh, we will be talking about. Please use uh, the email address that uh, I am displaying now. So it's webinars at cuatrecases.com and we'll be answering these questions at the end of the presentation. We hope that this is useful for you. So, so uh, I think that uh, we, can, we can start uh, dealing with, uh, with, uh, with the matter itself. So the, the first uh, thing that we, we have to, to, to bear in mind is that uh, the Spanish uh, uh, online gambling market is uh, well, uh, a well-consolidated market. It's a, it's, a, it's a regulated market since 2011, uh, and the first licenses uh, were granted uh, back in June 2012. Regardless of this, it still remains as a growing market. So uh, if we take the most updated information on the market uh, 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 evolution as issued by the Spanish authorities, we may find out that in uh, Q3 2017, the combined revenue that was generated by all license operators was of 140.5 million euros. This implies that in that quarter, there was a 17% growth regarding uh, Q2 of the same year. And if we take a, a, a longer view, uh, that would imply that in Q3 2017, there was a growth in the combined revenue that was, uh, or that corresponded to 30, 37% more than Q3 2016. So what we see uh, from here is that there is a continuous market growth uh, regardless of the matureness and the uh, uh, establishment of the conditions that apply to uh, this market. We could define the main features of the Spanish online gambling market uh, uh, as uh, related to, uh, well, an obvious uh, importance of uh, bookmaking and sport betting uh, as being one of the, or most probably the most uh, successful uh, product in the, in, the, in the market. Regardless of this, uh, betting is not the only significant product in, in Spain. On the contrary, uh, casino and, and poker uh, uh, remains uh, very, very uh, significant. And uh, in particular, the introduction of slot machine games uh, back in uh, 2015 uh, was uh, quite a significant feature in order to uh, boost uh, continuous growth of the market. So what we have is uh, a market that still offers quite a number of opportunities for operators and therefore uh, the Spanish authorities have thought that there was uh, a good uh, uh, opportunity to reopen the market and allow uh, the application for uh, new licenses that would uh, uh, well allow precisely uh, trying to uh, conquer this uh, interesting uh, market. In this respect, uh, the Spanish authorities have decided to take, I would say, uh, a, a double approach. On the one hand, 
they have uh, already put in, uh, in, in, in motion uh, a licensing uh, window that uh, will be uh, well on, uh, on uh, available for one year. So from uh, December 18th, 2017 until December 18th, 2018, and as we will be explaining with more detail afterwards, uh, general licenses will be available for application. And therefore, uh, uh, new entrants in the market will be allowed to step in and uh, obtain the licenses required to start operations in Spain. But it's not just this. The thing is that uh, operators that are already present in the Spanish market will also be uh, uh, allowed to apply for additional licenses and therefore expand their activities uh, in connection with, with, with the market. In parallel, we know that uh, the Spanish authorities are also uh, finishing the works for a number of new regulations amending the uh, current regulatory uh, framework. Uh, the basic uh, idea for this is to make the, the, the Spanish regulated market even more attractive and create opportunities that allow uh, uh, operators uh, while well, being convinced uh, about the, the convenience of being present in this important market. Note that uh, in this respect, the, 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 the Spanish authorities, due to political reasons since uh, Spain uh, was uh, for almost one year uh, unable to, to, to count with uh, uh, established uh, uh, national government, uh, well, that uh, situation implied a freezing of the regulatory uh, developments for that term. Now the Spanish authorities are aiming at moving forward with a number of amendments that will allow the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the market and the, the offering in itself to uh, be uh, more attractive and therefore generate more opportunities. In this respect, uh, what we will be doing in the session today will be Firstly, analyzing the main features of the licensing requirements, timelines, and costs that will uh, imply, uh, well, applying for, uh, for licenses and therefore entering into the Spanish market. And afterwards, we will also be analyzing the uh, regulations that will be likely uh, be approved very shortly and that will make the uh, Spanish uh, market even more attractive. So I pass on the, to, to, to Elisa who will be starting with uh, the uh, description of uh, the uh, licensing window that uh, has been open since uh, December 18th uh, last year. So Elisa, up to you. Thank you, Albert. As most of you already know, the online gambling activities was firstly regulated in Spain in 2011. And since then, the, the, well, since the moment the Gambling Act was approved, two different licensing processes have taken place in Spain. The first one took place in 2011 and the second in 2014. This took place after the publication of two new regulations allowing operators to offer slots and exchange betting activities. And as previously indicated by Albert, the, the Spanish market still offers very good opportunities for new entrants. And as a consequence of this, uh, the DOJ has decided that it's a good moment to open a new licensing process. However, it is very important that the most relevant change uh, that we will see in this process is that, that while in the two previous cases, the operators were given a, a, a very tight 30 days term for filing the corresponding applications, with, with this new window, the DOJ has decided that uh, the term will be extended to one year. And therefore, as you can see in this slide, the, the, the applications can be filed between December 18, 2017 and December 18, 2018. Uh, well, we will see in the next slide the process for granting the, the, the new licenses in Spain. Um, as you can see here, once a license application is filed, the DOJ will notify its decision on, on the granting or not of the licenses within a maximum term of six months. This six month period is the maximum term granted to the DOJ to resolve on the applications filed. This means that it could, it could be reduced. 
However, in the previous processes, the, the, the licenses were indeed granted in this six month term. But now, considering that in this new call for tender, the applications will be filed and on, and on one year instead of the usual 30 days window, we understand that the DOJ workload will be significantly reduced. Therefore, we understand that this application process, the grant is term should be approximately of four months, is our estimation. With the license applications, operators are required to file a so-called preliminary certification report, which should certify that the technical project, which is filed with the license application, complies indeed with the technical requirements. And once all this documentation is reviewed by the DOJ, they grant the license or not on provisional basis. Well, when you count with your provisional license, you have a four month term to file a definitive certification report. And this, this certification report will evidence that the technical system effectively used by the operator complies the technical requirements. Uh, the, the, technical, the, the, the license granted by the DOJ has to be homologated and this should be made in a six month term um, from the date of granting of the licenses on provisional basis. Once you have the homologation of the license, this will become definitive. Um, in the next slide, we, we will show you the, the licenses that can be obtained in Spain uh, in, in, in the actual uh, situation. Um, those operators who are interested in applying for new licenses in Spain must take into account that there are two different sets of licenses that should be obtained. Firstly, it is required that applicants obtain a so-called general license. This type of license covers general categories of gains and requires the applicant to attest the fulfillment of several legal, technical and financial requirements in order to ensure that they are entitled to operate properly their online gambling activities in Spain. Uh, this general license you can see here that at betting, other games or contest. On the other hand, uh, once you have obtained the, the general license, you can also obtain the, the, the so-called general license uh, for each of the games you are aimed to offer in Spain. Uh, well, the, the singular license can be also obtained at the same time of, of a general license. Applications can be filed at the same time. And the, the, the singular licenses that can be obtained in Spain are uh, firstly sport betting. Um, and for this, you have to obtain a general license for betting and a singular license for the exploitation of fixed autos per betting, pool sport betting or sport exchange betting, depending on, on the type of, of game you want to offer. Operators are also entitled to offer horse race betting uh, and for this you have to also obtain a general license for, the, for, the, for, for betting and a singular license for the operation of one of the following products, depending on, again, on the category of bets you want to offer. Fixed horse racing, horse race pool betting or horse race exchange betting. Um, other betting are also allowed to be offered in Spain and these entitled operators to offer remote betting on events which are not related to a sport. This will be related more to social, political or cultural events and can cover the outcome of, for example, e-sport events, uh, political elections, TV shows or, or the popular home racing. Uh, for this, again, you have to obtain the general license for betting and the singular license for, for, for other betting. Um, in order to offer any of the casino games, uh, such as roulette, baccarat, blackjack or slot, you must obtain the, the so-called general license for other games. And then you have to obtain the singular license for the specific game you want to offer. Um, in the case of roulette, it is important to, um, to, to know that you can also offer the, the live roulette. But for this, you have to obtain a specific authorization from the DOJ. In order to offer poker or, or bingo, you have to also obtain a general license for other games and then a singular license for poker or bingo, depending on the, on the game you want to offer. Uh, and you can also offer in Spain the, the so-called complementary games, which are those games basically aimed at entertaining the players. And the stakes and prices are based on low amounts. Uh, for this, you have to also obtain the general license for other games and the singular license for complementary games. And finally, uh, in order to offer contest, which is a category um, that, uh, that refers to contests that are offered as ancillary feature for TV or radio shows, 
for this, you have to obtain the general license for contest and the singular license for, for contest. Uh, well, now that we have reviewed the licenses that can be obtained in Spain, we will through those requirements that operators interested in applying for, for a gambling license in Spain must comply in order to be entitled to, to file the applications. Uh, well, it is the order published by the DOJ on December 16, 2017, uh, the provision who sets forth the requirements that must be met in order to obtain the license in Spain. And also it describes the documents that must be filed in order to apply for the licenses. The, the documents to be filed are aimed to evidence that the, the applicant complies with the requirements allowing the company to offer its gaming activities. And among these, you have to file several corporate requirement documents sorry, that uh, cover, for example, a copy of the deed of incorporation of the company, the articles of association, powers of attorney. Um, all these documents have to be sworn translated into Spanish and duly notarized and apostilled. Well, the, the, the requirements that, that uh, an applicant must comply in order to apply for a license in Spain um, are those that you can see here in among the, the most important as are to be a legal person having a corporate address in a state member of the European Economic Area and having the corporate structure of a Spanish Sociedad Anonima with, or, or equivalent uh, corporate type. Uh, this can be the case, for example, of a Maltese public limited company. Uh, the, 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 the entity must also be registered or at least have they requested the registration with the corresponding company's house. Uh, in case the applicant company is not based in Spain, it should appoint a representative for notification purposes uh, in this territory, uh, who will be in charge with the duty of serving as a permanent point of contact for receiving any communication from the DOJ on behalf of the operator. And finally, the applicant must have a sole, as, a, as the sole corporate purpose the operation of gambling activities and count with a minimum total paid at corporate uh, capital of 60,000 euros. Further to the corporate requirements, uh, operators interested in applying for gambling licenses must also comply with several financial requirements which are described in, in, in this slide you can see now. Uh, the, the most relevant financial requirements will say is the need to submit a financial warranty of 2 million euros per general license. This financial warranty must be enforceable in Spain. This is important to take into account, meaning that in case of using a, a bank warranty, this will be constituted in a Spanish entity. And, and the financial warranty is subject to the fulfillment of the obligations established in the Spanish Gambling Act. However, the, this financial warranty will amount 2 million during the so-called initial period, uh, which is of around one year and a half from the granting of the licenses on provisional basis. After this, the amount of the warranty shall be calculated based on the revenues obtained by the operators during the previous year in, 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 in the offering of activities in Spain. But this is always subject to a minimum of 1 million euro in, in general for, for all the licenses. Um, in, in, in those cases when the applicant operator already has a general license in, in Spain, there is no need to constitute an additional financial warranty for 2 million euros, um, but uh, the, the, they only have to, to update the amount uh, to be paid for the corresponding amount of uh, the revenues obtained in the previous year and, and state that these new licenses will be also subject to, to the already constituted financial warranty. The, the applicant operators must also have a bank account in, in a Spanish entity. Um, this bank account will be used by the licensed operator in connection with the users found and must, must be independent from the rest of bank accounts they, they have in, in, for, for the provision of their operations. Um, the operator must not notify to the Spanish gambling authorities the details on this bank account prior to the commercial launching of, of the activities. And this account must complete with certain requirements, um, which are, uh, for example, always counting with at least the same balance that correspond to the aggregate of the sums deposited by the Spanish players in their gambling accounts, not using these amounts uh, deposited in the account uh, for purposes other than the ordinary development of the games or li limiting the powers of disposition of the funds of the account to 13 representatives. 
Uh, finally, uh, operators are also required to evidence to the DOJ that they have enough, enough financial solvency in order to be entitled to operate in Spain. Uh, in order to do this, the, the most common is to file a copy of their outdated annual accounts for the last three years, as well as statements from the authorities of the jurisdiction of origin confirming that the company indeed has financial solvency uh, to carry out these activities. Uh, also, with the license, operators are required to file the, the so-called business plan, which shall define their, 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 their expectation for the next three years and describe the origin and financial resources that it will be used for the development of the gambling activities in, in Spain. Now, uh, Claudia will explain us in detail the, the costs associated with the, with the application process. Thank you, Elisa. Um, well, as most of you know, the filing of gambling licenses entails several costs, such as the payment of the corresponding administrative fees. In this respect, the fees for filing a singular license application amount 10,000 euros per application, and the registration of each singular license with the gambling registry amounts 2,500 euros. Moreover, the issuance of technical reports evaluating the level of compliance of the gaming platform is subject to 38,000 euros. This is only paid once. And finally, licensed operators are required to pay, to pay a yearly administrative fee in consideration for the monitoring and regulatory measures developed by the DJJ. Um, the amount of such, such yearly fee will correspond to 0.75 per thousand of the gross revenue obtained by the operator in Spain. And um, in addition to the corporate and financial requirements explained by Elisa, operators must also comply with a set of formal requirements. First of all, operators shall be registered or have applied for registration at the Spanish Gambling Authority Public Registry, and in particular, in the licensed applicants special section. Secondly, operators shall declare any corporate connection with other legal entities with whom the company holds any type of link or control. Also, applicants shall disclose any situation of direct or indirect control or link um, with other um, interested parties and identify any legal entity with whom it shares a single decision-making center. Thirdly, um, operators uh, shall notify the ultimate shareholders, directors, and employees involved in the gambling activities. Fourthly, the applicant company cannot be involved in any of the circumstances contemplated in Article 13 of Gaming Act. The, this is basically, basically having been criminally condemned for social security or tax-related breaches, also fraud or other similar infringements. And at the time of filing the license applications, the applicant company uh, must not be offering gambling activities referred to the license applied for in Spain and must not be carrying out advertising or promotional activities related to games covered under the license applied for. Uh, due to the fact that online gambling operators are obliged subjects under the Spanish AML regulations, the DJJ require, require these to have in place appropriate systems to avoid fraud and anti-money laundering and terrorist financing practices. Therefore, applicant companies must come with a complete AML manual aligned with the Spanish AML provisions and also undergo a yearly audit by an external expert. Another formal requirement is to establish financial limits on deposits of the players. These limits in principle might not be greater than 600 euros for daily limits, 1,500 euros for weekly limits, and 3,000 euros for the monthly limits. Note, however, that um, players are able to require operators to increase or decrease these deposit limits, as long as they successfully pass the probing problem gambling test set for by the Spanish authorities for these cases. Um, the, the new self-imposed limits cannot be increased during the three months following the limit adjustment. And finally, within the license application, applicants shall file additional documents aimed at proving the Spanish authorities that they comply with all the formal requirements set for in the corresponding provisions. This implies the need to file a full copy of the contract formalized with all the suppliers participating or, or that are going to participate in the operation and exploitation of gaming activities, a list of European countries where the applicant has previously obtained any license to the development and commercialization of online gambling activities, 
also a list of .s domain names registered by the applicant, and finally, the gambling contract that the applicant will propose to the participant, including the terms and conditions, privacy and confidentiality policies. And in addition to the corporate financial and formal requirements, operators must also comply with a set of technical requirements. Firstly, they must have in place a gaming central unit. This is a technical platform used for, for the operation of licensed gambling activities in Spain, which will be remotely connected to the DJJ and shall allow the Spanish gam gaming authorities to immediately access to the platform of the operate. Uh, also, applicants must come with a vault. This is a secure database that operators shall use for recording each and every single translator transaction generated in connection with the Spanish players and should be also located in Spain. And the, ga the games to be offered must comply with the technical specifications published by the DJJ, meaning that the technical documents to be filed with the application must ensure that operator's technical system complies with the provisions set for in the Spanish technical regulations and that consequently the offer of gambling activities in Spain complies with the technical requirements. In this respect, applicants shall be required to file a technical project describing the system to be used for the offering of the activities in Spain, covering each of the games to be offered and containing a description of the rules of those games. Likewise, applicants shall prepare and file an operative plan, which basically shall contain a business plan for the exploitation of the gambling activities to be authorized, as well as a description of those measures that the applicant will be applying for ensuring a responsible gambling experience for users. And finally, every two years, online gambling operators having obtained the corresponding licenses in Spain must carry out an audit of the technical systems, which must be performed by any of the certification entities authorized by the DJJ. This technical audit is aimed at verifying that the requirements set for by the Spanish gambling provisions on the operator's technical system, platforms and software are met by the operator. Well, now Albert will explain the recent regulatory developments in Spain. Thank you very much, Claudia. As mentioned at the beginning of the, of the session today, uh, the, 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 the second part of uh, of the of the webinar wants to be focused on the likely regulatory developments that will be giving accompanying the licensing window. The Spanish authorities, <coughs> sorry, have clearly understood that uh, in order to attract new uh, entrants in the Spanish markets, as well as in order to ensure that the present operators do keep on investing in the in the Spanish presence, they need to optimize the attractiveness of the uh, Spanish uh, offering. Therefore, uh, they are currently preparing, and it's likely that shortly we'll be launching a number of significant regulatory developments that can lead or should lead ideally to an improvement of the market conditions and offering in Spain. I would say that the first uh, significant feature of these uh, amendments will consist on a review of the existing regulations in order to make them simpler and therefore more operative and attractive for both operators and players. So just to give you an example, the idea would consist of, uh, for instance, abandoning the current system of closed categories for uh, several games. Currently in, in Spain, roulette or blackjack, just to give you a couple of examples, can only be offered pursuant or under the categories that have been expressly regulated and approved by the uh, Spanish authorities. On the contrary, what the Spanish uh, uh, authorities are uh, considering uh, would consist of a, a simplification in the sense of abandoning these closed categories approach and allowing uh, the, the, the offering of all sorts of uh, games based on these, uh, well, games uh, and themselves, but without the need to uh, stick to the specific modalities regulated, but on the contrary, just follow the general rules that define the game as baccarat, as baccarat or as blackjack or as roulette as uh, defined. 
this is something that is not new in, in Spain. Just to give you an example, uh, some three years ago, uh, bingo uh, regulations were amended in order to precisely allow that simplification and make the offering more flexible. And currently, uh, bingo can be offered under any modality and even be based not just in numbers, but also in symbols. So the idea is precisely at uh, uh, ensuring uh, a more expanded offering and more flexible and dynamic offering of games, but allowing players to uh, access uh, all sorts of, of, of games as long as they fulfill the general rules that define the game within the corresponding category. A second and obvious development will consist on the introduction of new games. The uh, general rule in the Spanish law is that uh, only games that have been expressly approved and regulated can be offered by licensed operators. And therefore, the uh, ambition of the Spanish authorities is to ensure a catalog of games that can be, uh, well, reasonably uh, attractive and uh, compete with uh, unregulated markets that uh, can uh, illegally attract uh, uh, players from Spain. So the first very likely uh, well growth that we will be seeing in this respect will consist of the introduction of so-called uh, virtual betting. Uh, uh, Similarly to uh, other regulated markets, uh, the, the Spanish authorities consider that the time is right for uh, start offering this product, which, as you perfectly know, consists of the recreation of a sport or horse racing or hound racing uh, event, which at the end of the day is nothing but a, a random number generated uh, game that, uh, well, counts with a specific and more attractive graphical uh, interface. So in this respect, the Spanish authorities have already stated that uh, they will be allowing the offering of these games under the category of uh, slots. So as long as these games are offered under this category, they uh, should be available for offering and use in Spain. A second big miss in the in the Spanish uh, catalog of regulated games consists of fantasy sports. As you know, fantasy sports have become increasingly popular in all the relevant markets, and as a matter of fact, in other uh, European regulated markets like uh, the UK, Italy, or France, fantasy sports do already count with their own licensing system. Well. We should be expecting this to be happening in Spain as well, and therefore we should be expecting a specific uh, a singular license for the operation of fantasy leagues and fantasy sports so that uh, this uh, attractive uh, product is available uh, in, in Spain as well. Finally, as uh, Elisa was mentioning, uh, at present uh, in Spain only roulette can be offered on a live basis. So only roulette can be broadcasted with the restriction of this broadcasted taking place from the premises of an authorized casino in Spain. Well, the Spanish authorities are also uh, uh, well moving forward with the approval of uh, uh, an expansion of the uh, live offering. And therefore, uh, roulette will not just be the only game that could be offered on a live basis, but this will be expanded to uh, blackjack, which is the, 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 the obvious continuation of, of live offering, as well as baccarat. So the idea is precisely to offer these games on a live basis, but for the time being, keeping them to the, to the same restriction that I have just described before. So any such broadcasting and therefore any live offering of Blackjack or Baccarat will also be required to be uh, made from the premises of a casino uh, located uh, in Spain. Another obvious uh, demand from the industry is precisely uh, on liquidity. Uh, the Spanish regulated market has been established since uh, its uh, launching as a so-called uh, uh, ring fence market. Uh, for the time being, 
only uh, 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 players who are registered with a Spanish licensed uh, uh, operator can play among them. So uh, this is something that clearly impacts in uh, games where, uh, well, counting with a significant liquidity increases its, uh, its uh, attractiveness. And we are obviously talking about the, uh, essentially, the peer-to-peer -peer games like, like poker or betting exchange. So in this respect, we do already count with, uh, with, uh, with an obvious uh, development in the case of poker. A couple of, uh, well, three months ago, uh, the, the Spanish, the Italian, Portuguese, and the French uh, gambling regulators reached an agreement allowing the, uh, the creation of a shared liquidity network for poker uh, among, uh, well, the license operators counting with licenses and presence in those, uh, in those markets. So, uh, Right now, what we are seeing is the uh, effort uh, on an internal basis in each one of these jurisdictions to approve the internal rules uh, while allowing the launching of these operations. In the particular case of Spain, on uh, December 29th, uh, the general director uh, of uh, gambling activities did publish uh, uh, a decision, which, as a matter of fact, is pending to be published in the Spanish Official Gazette, that allowed the launching the, uh, uh, the, of a shared liquidity poker activities in Spain. So as soon as this, uh, this uh, decision is published in the Spanish Official Gazette, something that should be happening in the, in the next days, uh, well, this possibility will be available for uh, operators uh, counting with presence in the Spanish market, as well as in other of the three remaining regulated markets that I have just mentioned as long as these uh, uh, or the corresponding authorities have approved the internal rules that allow this offering. But it is obvious that uh, uh, this shared liquidity is also deemed as a test field for the uh, expansion towards uh, a more ambitious uh, open liquidity uh, approach. And this is being studied uh, in, in, in by, the, by the Spanish authorities, particularly in connection with uh, markets that or categories of games that have not developed properly, precisely due to the fact uh, of uh, uh, lacking an uh, uh, international liquidity uh, system. And uh, the obvious example in this respect is of betting exchange. So we should not be surprised that in the in the very next future, the uh, Spanish regulator approves uh, again as another step towards uh, 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 opening international liquidity to uh, all games, but starting with uh, betting exchange, the possibility of uh, such uh, uh, game uh, being offered on a uh, open liquidity basis due to precisely the, uh, 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 the struggles that it has been facing due to the uh, national liquidity requirements that currently apply in Spain. I am saying that this is aimed at being uh, or is being considered as, as, as being uh, a, a test field for uh, further expansion towards other categories of games where expanded liquidity can be crucial. So we could be talking about in the in the in the future about uh, 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 an expansion of uh, liquidity towards international uh, for categories of games like bingo, pool betting or even slots where the jackpots that can be uh, 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 generated will obviously be much more attractive if the number of players is much bigger than uh, the, the, the ones that currently exist. So I would say that these are the, 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 the crucial uh, developments that we should be expecting in uh, connection with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Spanish market in the very uh, short uh, future. 
as I've said in the, uh, as I've mentioned in the at the beginning of the of the session, we have uh, well received uh, several uh, several consultations that due to time restraints, uh, well uh, we won't be able to respond all of them in in the in the in the in the session. What we will be doing will be doing a responding them offline. But in any case, I would like to at least address three of the questions that we have uh, received, and we will be responding by email to the to the rest of them. The first one uh, relates to, 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 to the timing for the granting of licenses. So, so there is a, a doubt surrounding whether the, the licenses will be granted as it has been the case in the two preceding licensing windows uh, in block. So all of them at the same time for all oper operators having applied at the same time. So in this respect, as Elisa mentioned, uh, in this case, uh, there is a significant difference in regards of uh, this licensing window. The thing is that in the two previous windows, uh, applicants did only count with a 30-day term for filing their applications. And therefore, all uh, the, the, the filing was concentrated in that tight time window. In this case, the, uh, the time uh, for applying for licenses has been significantly expanded. So we should be expecting from the DGOJ uh, applying a first come first served basis for the uh, granting of the licenses, as long as they uh, ensure the fulfillment of the requirements that we have just summarized. A second question that we have received relates to uh, financial guarantees and uh, uh, in particular which forms or which types of guarantees would be uh, accepted by the Spanish authorities. So in this respect, uh, the, the regulations do contemplate, uh, well, all the uh, financial guarantees that are accepted by Spanish law in this respect. So it can be take the form of a uh, uh, well financial or bank guarantee, as Elisa uh, uh, mentioned. It can also take the form of uh, a, 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 a mortgage or even a deposit, uh, a, a money deposit of the corresponding amount, so two million euros per general license, uh, in the uh, account that the Spanish regulator uh, counts with in the Spanish central bank. There is a, a very important uh, feature in this in this respect regarding uh, the, the the financial guarantee, and this is that it has to have uh, an indefinite an, an indefinite nature. What this means is that it has to be enforceable and has to be uh, uh, well being uh, uh, perfectly uh, well precisely uh, enforceable during the whole term of uh, validity of the of the licenses. Uh, which uh, relate to the uh, gambling activities that would be covered by this guarantee. So this implies in cases like, for instance, uh, 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 an insurance bond or uh, a bank guarantee, uh, uh, well, an increased difficulty taking into account that uh, the, the, the insurance policy or the bank warranty in question should have this indefinite nature and therefore should be permanently valid. Something that, uh, well, taking into account the costs of counting with these types of or these modalities of guarantees in Spain could uh, lead uh, to, uh, well, the, 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 the applicants to consider the possibility to deposit the, 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 the money required uh, for that guarantee with uh, the, 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 the bank account of the Spanish regulator because at the end of the day, that would be the less expensive uh, 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 option taking into account the difficulties uh, that I have just highlighted. Finally, we have also received a, a, a consultation regarding the domain names that can be used under uh, the, the Spanish regulated market. Only .es domain names can be offered uh, or can be used for the offering of online gambling activities in Spain. And therefore, any applicant should be uh, including, as we have uh, highlighted, uh, well, uh, .es domain names in the applications uh, for the future uh, uh, exploitation of the uh, activities in question. The crucial element here is that, again, generic domain names like .com could not be used uh, for the operation of these activities in Spain. Uh, 
Again, as, as, I've, as I said to you, uh, we have received quite a number of uh, consultations, so we will be responding to the name offline through uh, the email and get back to you. Uh, there is not much to, to, to add, I would say. I uh, would also uh, invite you to, to, to drop us an email if you want uh, to request a copy of the presentation that we have used today. And in any case, you may find here our contact details so uh, that you can uh, contact us and, and, and share with us any doubt that you may have in connection with this new licensing window. As we have been recurrently repeating during the session today, we think it's a good opportunity to move forward and enter into the Spanish market. So please do not hesitate to, to, to contact us. We do thank you very much for your attention. We look forward to uh, respond any uh, uh, question that you may have. And uh, finally, my only pending task here is to thank you for attending the, the webinar today. Have a good day and I hope that we will stay in touch.